where the Trump trial is underway. And right now, the former president's close aide, trusted advisor, and former White House communications director, Hope Hicks, is on the stand. She no longer has an official role in Trump world, has testified to the January 6th House Select Committee, but Hicks was by Trump's side throughout his 2016 campaign and for a time when he was serving as president. She potentially has a first-hand account of the alleged crimes her former boss is now charged with. We begin with NBC News chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander, who covered the Trump White House and, of course, covered House Hope, Hope Hicks and knows her well. Former Manhattan assistant district attorney Catherine Christian here on set with me. Jury consultant and former prosecutor David Henderson and former DOJ official and co-host of the Prosecuting Donald Trump podcast, Mary McCord. So, Peter, first explain why Hope Hicks is so critical to the timeline and the prosecution's case, potentially. Well, uh, let's just start with the fact that Hope Hicks is about as close to Donald Trump as any member of his own family. She was, in effect, a daughter to Donald Trump for the entirety of her time working on the campaign. And then here at the White House, she said at the top of her testimony that she hasn't been in direct contact with him since about 2022. Since leaving the White House, she's been engaged. She has a PR company as well, working independently. But she's critical to the testimony today because she was effectively at Donald Trump's side for the entirety of the campaign, traveling with him at times when the campaign barely existed, when it was in effect just the two of them. And then in the White House, she was one of the most trusted confidants of the president as well. I was speaking to someone close to Hicks only a short time ago who said the reason the president trusted her so much is because she is someone who is not believed to have any agenda, that her advice was usually just the advice in the former president's best interest or trying to accommodate whatever his desires were. And that's why the testimony we are hearing right now, including detailing what she heard between Donald Trump and the National Enquirer's uh, publisher, David Pecker, is so critical. So just sort of a beginning point to the testimony as they are laying this out before the jurors right now, Andrea. And Catherine Hicks, let's talk about what she's telling the jury, what she could tell the jury, and as Peter points out, why she is so so critical of witnesses. She's here. very critical because she worked for Donald Trump and, she, according to her testimony, reported directly to him at the Trump Organization and during the campaign. And so she, as a press person does, she dealt with people who had his interviews. She said he was very hands-on, that she followed his lead. So as David Pecker said, this is a very detailed-oriented, micromanaging person who's not aloof and not involved. And she's also being asked about the, the Access Hollywood tape right now. And that's so critical, Catherine, because she was there. So she saw his immediate reactions, and this would get to his intent of why, why he was really concerned about the tape, which leads up to the motivation for everything that followed, allegedly. And exactly. And because she was the press person, clearly she knew the explosion that that tape caused, because she was the one who had to deal with that blowback. And she saw his reaction, and it explains, which the prosecution will say, why it was so important for him to hush up Ms. Daniels. Mayor McCord, one of the things that Hicks was asked already on the stand is if she's familiar with Keith Schiller. Now, Keith Schiller was more than a bodyguard. He, he was a, a close advisor, but he was there for everything that happened with Donald Trump. Uh, talk to me about the, the importance of Keith Schiller in that world. Well, again, you know, just like with Hope Hicks, anyone who's close to Trump at the time that is in question when it comes to the facts that the government's trying to prove in this trial, these are going to be important witnesses because the prosecution, what's critical here is they're going to have to shore up everything that Michael Cohen is expected to testify about later in this trial. I mean, he is a key witness, of course, to the pay the payments and the cover-up of those payments. Remember, the charges here are fraudulent business records. And yet he's got a lot of baggage. He has got a lot of uh, bad information that will come out about him, that uh, his uh, credibility will be attacked. So everyone who had contact with Mr. Trump, who had contact with Mr. Cohen, who knows about the arrangement or overheard discussions about the arrangement uh, between Cohen and Pecker and Trump, those are all going to be important witnesses for the government to call. And that includes Hope Hicks, that includes um, Keith Schiller and what he knew. David Henderson, let's talk about the importance of this witness as a stand and as a former prosecutor, how you handle this kind of a witness, how important this is to the case. 
Well, Andrea, you can tell how important it is to the case by the time at which they've chosen to call her. They've chosen to call her on a Friday late morning when she's going to bleed into the afternoon. She's likely going to be the last person on the witness stand today, which means the jury is going to go home talking about her over the course of the weekend. That's the first thing that stands out to me. The next thing that stands out is she's my kind of witness, and she's the first person I've seen in this trial that I would actually want to put on the stand. Some of the people you had to, but my kind of witness gets there and they say, look, I've got a job. I've got other places to be. I don't I don't want to be here. I'm extremely nervous about being here, and I'm only here because I was subpoenaed, and I was subpoenaed to tell the truth, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. The other panelists have already pointed out the real danger. One, first and foremost, is the defense is now deeply regretting that they have been put under the gag order because former President Trump keeps threatening people because you want to know she's going to take the stand before she does, because it's very common for people to underestimate what all she saw, what all she knows. But if you're wondering why it's important, Hamilton has a, sort, uh, has a song about it. You want to be in the room where it happened, and she puts you there. And, David, as I'm looking at the Google Doc coming from the courtroom, uh, from our folks there, they are apparently going through the transcript. Now, they're not going to show the video, according to the court's order, of the Access Hollywood tape. But they are reading the transcript. And as you know, that transcript is pretty vulgar. Um, mm -hmm. I think you don't see it, but you can hear the audio from the hot mics. Uh, let me bring in Ashley Parker, uh, Washington Post senior national correspondent Ashley Parker, and an MSNBC political analyst. So, Ashley, you've been reporting about Hope Hicks's mindset leading up to this testimony. What have you learned? Well, one thing is she does not want to testify. Um, she's told people close to her that she is frustrated and angry about being called in um, and that she thinks it's a waste of time and money. And this uh, is is personal for her because, you know, she's someone who kind of improbably joined Trump's orbit as one of his first campaign staffers. And despite leaving the White House uh, for a period of time, she has sort of been here for every major moment, scandal, and controversy. So this is not her first time at the rodeo, right? She has been hauled before congressional committees, numerous congressional committees. She had to testify um, before Congress on January 6th. She's appeared before a grand, at least one grand jury. She was interviewed by Robert Mueller in his investigation three times and appeared in his report 180 times. And it's worth noting that after they left the White House, she and former President Trump stayed in touch. She went down to Mar-a-Lago a handful of times. But after that January 6th testimony before Congress, which, again, she was compelled to give uh, because of a subpoena, their relationship chilled. Ivanka Trump, the former president's daughter, um, was furious about some of the real-time text messages that Hope had sent on January 6th that came out in that congressional testimony. And Trump himself thought she had gone too far. Um, so, again, people say they have a, a cordial relationship, that there's a lot of history and warmth between them. And, you know, uh, being in Trump's orbit is sort of like the Hotel California. You can check out, but you never quite leave. But but this is going to be an uncomfortable moment for different reasons for both of them uh, being in that courtroom together. I want to bring in Vaughn Hilliard. Vaughn, from the Duke of where she's being asked about when she first heard about the Access Hollywood tape, and it was from David Farenthal from The Washington Post, saying that he had an extremely urgent request. Do you want to pick it up from there? Right. This is October 2nd, is the chronicling of Hope Hicks about when she received that initial email from David Farenthold at the Washington Post about the exchange that Donald Trump had in 2005 with Billy Bush, in which he, uh, in very vulgar terms, described uh, sexually abusing women. I want to be clear here where Hicks is describing now that she was on the 14th floor of Trump Tower when she received that email. Of course, October 2nd was five days before ultimately the article was published there. And she says that, quote, I was very concerned. I was concerned about the contents of the email, lack of time to respond, had the transcript, but not the tape. She says that she sent it then to other campaign leadership, including Jason Miller, David Bossie, Kellyanne Conway, and Steve Bannon. She goes on to describe the way in which these, the leadership roles that these individuals held, and as we're working our way through here, she went to go talk to the group of them on the 25th floor. She is now saying Jason Miller again. And we should know Jason Miller is a part of his current 2024 operation. Of course, Kellyanne Conway, Steve Bannon, 
Jared Kushner, Stephen Miller. She says perhaps Chris Christie was there. The whole group, they had been upstairs. They were practicing up on the 25th floor for debate prep. Jeff Sessions was there too that she recalls there. The debate prep was taking place in the conference room. And again, this is where the struggle comes down over the course of the five days about how to respond to that. And of course, we expect the prosecution to ask her about the October 8th phone call the day after Andrea, the, the Washington Post published Access Hollywood tape, when there are a phone call records that show that Hope Hicks connected Donald Trump to Michael Cohen. And then later on, she had a separate short phone call with Michael Cohen. Of course, the details of those phone calls, she has not publicly ever explained. Uh, uh, that they included discussion about Stormy Daniels explicitly, but we could expect here in these minutes ahead there that we would expect prosecutors to ask her about the uh, events as they unfolded over the course of that week around the Access Hollywood tape. And Vaughn, as I'm just reading this as you were just speaking, of course, Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, was also in that group of top advisors. Uh, and she's saying that she then uh, was called and Mr. Trump asked her to come and share with him what was happening. She shared the email from David Parenthal with